Hi. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. You got the memo on wearing blue today? You we we are wearing blue. You got yeah. my memo? Yeah. We're trying yes, to co color coordinate. Just kidding. Yeah, I kind of I kind of was a bit disappointed because I think this top I bought it because it's really lightweight for summer, mm -hmm. but summer hasn't arrived yet. <laughs> So I've got something underneath, underneath <laughs> it. And it kind of looks like a surgical top. I was just really liking the colors, like tanzanite, like a blue purple. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you for seeing only the best. Oh. Christ vision. Yeah, Christ vision. That's it. Lesson 175. God is but love, and therefore so am I. This is a review of lessons 159 and 160. Lesson 159 is, I give the miracles I have received. God is but love, and therefore so am I. Do we want to unpack that one first? Yeah. Um, I give the miracles I have received, yeah? Mm -hmm. So... This is going back to what Jesus is saying in lesson 159. He says, no one can give what he has not received. To give a thing requires first that you have it in your own possession. Yeah. yeah. Here the laws of heaven and the world agree. But here they also separate. The world believes that to possess a thing it must be kept. Yeah. We don't want to share it. No. Because if we share it, we give it away. We've got, <clears throat> we don't have it anymore. Right. Or we have less of it, right, in giving it away. Yeah. Salvation teaches otherwise. To give is how to recognize you have shed. Oh, sorry. To give <laughs> is how to recognize you have received. It is the proof that what you have is yours. Now, so, an idea has just come in, sis. I just want to unpack that. Sure. So I was reading. Yeah. Uh, is that's part of the ego's plan uh, to, uh, to make matter, you know, substance. Yes. Uh, to make ideas into substantial form. Mm -hmm of course, was to separate yes. and was in service to the ego's idea of possession. Mm -hmm. Right. right. Um, but everything is an idea. Everything, every single thing is an idea. This glass of water mm -hmm. is really an idea that's in my mind. Yes. Um, therefore, if we have an idea, mm -hmm. an idea, just have an idea here at the level of form, and then we decide to share that idea with someone else, mm -hmm. does it decrease no. or increase? No. Can, can I use an example that I like? Yeah, please. Um, please. So if you just think of, of a number, like any number, three is a good number, um, you know, that's an idea. And, and everybody has access to use a three. Three is infinite in its, you know, um, availability to the mind that uses it. But once, say that we tried to reduce three to a wooden figure, we cut, carved out a three and said, this is really three, right? Nobody can use it unless you're holding this three. Mm. So therein lies this um, insistence of the ego that what is all ideas, infinitely available, um, eternal, can't be changed, can't can't be lost. This is the way that, it, there you go, right? Nook okay. has the only three and we're all screwed. All of our math, all of our numbering systems, everything, that, all of our computations, we're gonna be totally lost because Nook possesses the only three there is on the planet. And I won't share it. And she's not gonna share it, right? Cause she knows how valuable that is. So that separates her from the rest of us. <laughs> 
Yeah, but that's really what the ego tries to do by creating matter, because now some have and some don't, and some want to keep it and some want to have it, some try to take it. It's There's no uh, understanding or experience of one. What one has in truth, we all have. What's in the mind of God is in all minds as ideas. That's how she so, multiplied the fish and the loaves. Right. Okay. So this applies to the special relationships too. Oh, yeah. This is my love. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's exclusive love. That's right. And if the one we love also loves somebody else as well as us, mm -hmm. <laughs> do we celebrate that? No. Or do we want to cut the person off? Yes. <laughs> okay on the name of love. and we're not talking about sex here either we're talking about real love yes right? yeah. yes okay let's get off the subject um i mean get back to the subject hmm. um mm -mm, mm -mm. so he says here that salvation teaches you otherwise to give is how to recognize you have received underlined to give is how to recognize you have indeed received yeah. it is the proof that what you have is yours it's in the giving that's the proof right mm -hmm. you understand that you are healed when you give healing you accept forgiveness as accomplished in yourself when you forgive mm, that's huge isn't it yes it is yeah so it's in giving what the ego says we don't have, which is for the power to overlook our brothers' and sisters' belief that they have sinned, mm -hmm. right? And, and as we give that forgiveness, we, we receive it. We receive it. We know, wow, I'm innocent. We recognise our inheritance. Yeah, and you could really feel into that when someone's trying to give you something, but if they haven't yet experienced it or accepted it for themselves, they really don't have it to give. It's not the Christ and them sharing and extending something. It might be an ego trying to teach what it has not accepted for, you know, it can't accept anything for itself. But in other words, if you don't really have it, if you haven't experienced it, forgiveness and healing you you don't possess it to give and to share and only and by sharing it's strengthened so when the ego gives anything at all especially on special occasions right yeah. in special relationships yes more attack yeah you said attack yeah yes okay. so the ego gives the ego part gives to get always gives to get the ego's never given love nor has it received love doesn't know it yeah doesn't know it yeah just to make that point again mm -hmm. okay you recognize hang on a minute yeah you recognize your brother as yourself and thus do you perceive that you are whole mm -hmm. there is no miracle you cannot give for all are given you this one, I never really did understand this the first decade of studying the course. There is no miracle you cannot give for all are given you. What does that mean? Okay. So what that, what that means is that God has already given us everything. Mm -hmm. It's not like we need to wait for God to give us Right. some of his gifts or all of his gifts mm -hmm. he's already given us all of his gifts but we won't we won't have the felt experience of reclaiming those gifts mm -hmm. until we give them mm -hmm. yeah that's when we really really experience that right as you know sis with yes. our holy relationship mm -hmm. You didn't know about this part until we joined in that, right? right? Yeah, you don't know what you are because you've been so busy trying to pretend that you are for not the Christ. And then when you're in holy relationship, what comes forth when your brothers 
joining with you in the light of your mind, you start to recognize, wow, you know, here's contrast learning. And my TTC families have always provided me that opportunity to allow, you know, Christ to speak. Well, if it was there to share, to come through, it must be in my mind, you know, which is so inapposite to what Kareen is, this concept of Kareen. So yes, as you extend it, you know, well, where did that come from? It must be what I truly am. Mm -hmm. What a gift. Yeah, and that's why the TTC class is so powerful yeah. when we join and the other classes too where we're all joining um, because we can see it and you can feel it. And it's not just Kareen or me or yeah. our other beautiful facilitators who are sharing. It's everyone is sharing. Um, and and they speak and the Christ speaks through them. Yes. And you can feel it. It's like it just magnifies as the Christ speaks through them. They realize, my God, I must be the Christ. Yes. The Christ is my true identity. Yeah. And it's in giving that that, that part. It's in giving that part mm -hmm. that we realize we are that. And I hate to damn the special relationship so much, but I have to say this again. If, if we only have special relationships around us, and we're not joining with other like-minded people who have the same truly common purpose of awakening to the Christ we are, then we're going to be very, very limited in our experience of extending the Christ we are with no holes barred, right? Right. Really letting it rip mm -hmm. because in our special relationships, we hold back. Right. Because we're afraid that, oh, they might think I'm insane or whatever. Yeah. So I won't express the Christ. That's right. I will just I will just join them in meaningless banter yeah. and resent the hell out of them. Later. <laughs> yeah. Behind closed doors. Well, that's the agreement we make with everybody in our special relationship that we make bodies and, and the ego, the priority and the God of that, the goal of that relationship. While, you know, so we don't have permission to be vulnerable and transparent and to be real, right? Right. Without keeping honest. that mask on so that the holy instant does not occur. Do not shine your light. Be a body. Yeah. And so in if you're only surrounded by special relationships, you're only specially relating and nothing real is happening. And the crime of that is that you never come to understand what you are because you'll only know it as you give it. No opportunity to give, no opportunity to know yourself. Capital S. Well said. Yeah. Well said. That's going to tear a hole in the egos. You know what? Well, because I'm not, I'm not wallowing in this hell for no reason. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm using this opportunity to just take it down. <laughs> Thank you. I'm right there with you, Sid. Thank you. It's Thank you. Number. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's keep going. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> okay. So Jesus says about the gifts that God has already given us everything, right? And the way to reclaim all his gifts is to give them away. That's how we do it. Just give it away. Receive them now by opening the storehouse of your mind where they are laid and giving them away. He says it here. Yeah. Okay. So um, hmm. Christ vision is a miracle. It comes from far beyond itself for it reflects eternal love and the rebirth of love which never dies, but has been kept obscure. Christ's vision pictures heaven, for it sees a world so like to heaven that what God created perfect can be mirrored there. The darkened glass the world presents can show but twisted images in broken parts. The real world pictures heaven's innocence, which is what we are, right? Christ's vision is the miracle in which all miracles are born. It is their source remaining with each miracle you give and yet remaining yours. It is the bond by which the giver and receiver are united in extension here on earth as they are one in heaven. 
Christ beholds no sin in anyone. What he's saying there is Christ beholds no body in anyone. Okay? We look beyond the body and we see the light that is there. And in his sight, the sinless are as one. Their holiness was given by his father and himself. Christ's vision is the bridge between the worlds. And in its power, can you safely trust to carry you from this world into one made holy by forgiveness? Isn't that beautiful? Oh, it's gorgeous. And I'm really just feeling, you know, like right now we're seeing in a, through a darkened glass at twisted images that appear in fragmentation. That's all we're ever encountering. And yet there is a way to shine the light. And that is like we mentioned when we started Christ vision. And that is available to all of us because it's already within us. The means is within us, our true identity. So, and, but we won't know that you'll, you'll never know that that's in you available to you and the miracles that'll flow from that recognition until you step out and are willing to extend it and share it with a brother to ignite it to recall you know that little spark let it let it blossom into this flame mm -hmm. i just want that i'm not going to look at twisted images in a darkened glass i am going to go right into the to the light that's in my mind and make the gift to give it and then to have it right to share it is to keep it to keep the knowledge of your true identity and that's piercing this whole this whole darkened dream with with the light and that's that's the only gift we can give and that's the only time reality ever shows up and that's the miracle where we see something that looks so devastating turn in a moment your true perception of something erroneous when you bring it to the light in your mind that is instant healing that's correction that's where we go wow how did that happen it's actually a natural revealing of what was always there you brought the light you brought the lie the illusion to the light in your mind and correction was made in your mind yeah this is uh this is all we can do this is our function well, all of that puts paid to the spiritual ego's idea that a course in miracles is a self study program mm -hmm. well no because you it's the love of the whole it's love for our brother that even is the impetus to even want to do that the the mythical me wants to stay privatized and what it knows and withhold and be important to others as separate beings you know for my desire to look beyond bodies it's because i'm being moved by love's impulse mm -hmm. That's, I want to know what's there. That's transcending self-interest. I'm willing to forgo what Corrine thinks in that moment. Forget Corrine. I want to know what God's knowing right there. Transcending self-interest, wanting to join truly with my brother as he or she is and not some story that they, they might be under, you know, be deluded by in the, in the moment or I'm deluded by in the moment. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you, sis. Yeah, we have to receive it to give it. Thank yeah, I give the miracles I have received. And I think there's a second part to this lesson. Oh, <laughs> it's my turn now. Ha ha ha. Go for it. <laughs> I just caught you out. So yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. And the second part to lesson 175 is a review of lesson 160. I am at home. Fear is the stranger here. Powerful, powerful lesson. Another one, right? God is but love and therefore so am I. So fear is the stranger here. Fear is the stranger here. Not just sometimes, but in every single moment. In every moment, fear is the stranger here. Yeah. Am I judging in this moment? Ah, well, that's fear. 
I'm concerned for my daughter right now, mm. that's fear. I'm concerned about my finances right now, that's fear. You know, what, you know, pain, physical pain, that's fear. Sure. So Jesus is saying here, I'm at home. I am at home. Fear is the stranger here. Fear. Fear is a stranger to the ways of love. Identify with fear and you will be a stranger to yourself, of course. Right. That's mythical me. Mythical me is fear, right? And so we will be a stranger to our holy self, yeah. whom we share with all of our brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. That is the Christ, the yeah. light of the world. Which is and, thus, and thus, if you're a stranger to yourself, and thus you are unknown to you, that's what mythical me is, unknown. Well, it's unknown, right? Isn't it, sis? Yes. Yeah. What is your holy self remains an alien to the part of you which thinks that it is real, but different from yourself. That is the ego. Who could be sane in such a circumstance? Who but a madman could believe he, believe he is what he is not and then judge against himself? <laughs> yeah. The presence of fear is a sure sign that you are trusting in your own strength in the ego's strength of course the ego has no strength so we're trusting in the ego's weakness when we believe that fear is real that's the key believing it right yes. because the temptation the temptation is always there to feel fear right to believe fear the temptation is always there but we've got to catch it at the gate. Yeah. So love is what we are. And as soon as you experience fear, they can't, again, they can't be in the same mind at the same time. So you're looking at those dark and twisted images and you've decided that the ego's decided what the, those are and has determined them as a threat. And we've just, yes, we, that's a real threat and we're in fear and love cannot be experienced. That's the whole point of the ego thought system and its foundation of fear. It makes sure that we we're not present and at peace to receive and hear the voice, our voice of the Holy spirit, our right mind. So th that's the way that it just shunts us off. It clips our communion off with God. As soon as you feel fear, it doesn't matter. Fear has a billion different forms um, but he says thank god it's just one thing you think you're separate so your mythical me and mythical me is fear that's all yeah it has. Mm -hmm. yeah that's it thank you sis um and jesus says here chapter two section two mm. is when you're afraid of anything you're acknowledging its power to hurt you yes. remember where your heart is there is your treasure also you believe in what you value. If you're afraid, you're valuing wrongly. So it's what we value. Right. Yep. Well, that's a tough one. It, well, it's but it's true. We've seen it. Well, yeah. We've I mean, I'm just it. When, when it right. comes down to where you're really desiring to awaken and the ego uses the its so-called biggie. There is no hierarchy, but we all have this a thing that seems to get us and then you recognize that when you have this so-called ego backlash that really there is that decision being made there is a fear of our holiness or a fear of love and so you know it rages to give us a big infusion of the fear that keeps mythical me safe but we've just invited the stranger in again what we are is love We're, we don't have to battle fear we just have to disidentify with the one who's feeling fearful that's not me that's the key disidentification disidentify yeah. with it that is not me i am love i am at home i am at home in god as god created me that's the truth mm -hmm. and when we really choose that instead of the fear in that moment yeah holy spirit has the permission to heal our mind because we've willed 
with him. Which has all power. That's the all power. power. Of, yeah, God's all will. Power. We don't need to go into the story. We don't need to dredge it all up unless, of course, that's guided. Mm -hmm. But when we really, really join his will in saying no to fear, yeah. his will is done because it is our higher will, our only will. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the, there was something else I was going <clears> to <throat> add to this part where uh, oh, yeah, body thoughts, right? <clears throat> behind all body thoughts, behind all fear is the belief that we are a body. Right. Only a body can be fearful. Right. Only when we identify as a body can we be fearful. Jesus reminds us in Chapter 2, Section 6, he says, the presence of fear shows that you have raised body thoughts to the level of the mind. Mm -hmm. What he means by that is we have raised body thoughts above God, above our holy self, above the Christ. We've raised the thoughts to that standard. Mm -hmm. And then he says, Jesus says, this removes them from my control and makes you feel personally responsible for them. This is an obvious confusion of levels. You know, you can feel into that, right? Because suddenly when we believe a fear, when we believe a fear is real, we also take it on that we're responsible for solving it. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody better save my life. I, I need to do something about this problem because this body is what I am. My mind is in this body. It's making rules and, and conditions for me that I'm a victim of. And now I need to do something about this, right? False responsibility. Yeah. That's a biggie for the, for the ego. Yeah. yeah. So what do you do? It's mm -hmm. the recognition that the body is merely an image in mind outside of body. And that now you have a decision. Do you place that mind in service to ego, which is going to abuse the body and use it for guilt and separation? Or do you place the mind, uh, the body under divine mind? This is repurposing what you use the body for. Holy Spirit, use this body as a communication device. Do not let me make it a substitute God. This is not what I am. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I must do that a thousand times a day. I am at home. I am at home. Thank you. One last important reminder. Mm. Jesus says this. The correction of fear is your responsibility. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. When you ask for release from fear, you are implying that it is not. And we all do it. We all go, where are you, God? Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit, where are you? Take this fear from me. <laughs> right. You should, you should ask instead for help in the conditions that have brought the fear about. Mm -hmm. What the hell is he talking about? These conditions always entail a willingness to be separate. At that level, you can help it. You are much too tolerant of mind wandering and are passively condoning your mind's miscreations. Yeah, he says it right there, doesn't he? Yeah. Okay. So we need to, to, to take um, accountability for having obviously wanted to be separate mm -hmm. in some way and no guilt, mm -hmm. but that's that. Just admit to that and really, really want that gap closed. It's like the gap diagram. Right now. Yeah. And remembering that I am at home, fear is the stranger here. God is but love, and therefore, so am I. So, sis, if, is he saying, you know, when he says that, um, that last part that you were just reading, like mm -hmm. any time that we are mythically me identified, any time that we're valuing anything within this gap, right? Yeah. Jesus can help us with those when we offer this over to him. But the choice for fear is the choice for separation, right? It was, 
it was the tiny mad idea of what would it be like to be separate. And that was our choice. That's a will that we invoked uh, the, the desire in our mind seemed to give rise to this. So mm -hmm. Jesus is saying he can help us with the forgiveness and accepting atonement of, you know, everything in the gap. But we've got the still this the so-called mm, free choice or free will to decide whether I want this or not, right? He's not going to take that from us. This has to be a voluntary surrender. I'm done with this. I want this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, sis. Yeah. Thank you for driving that one home. Yeah. I just that had raised some confusion for me before. And so I just wanted to clarify. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Lesson. Good. Yeah. Good review. Huh? It was. I am at home. So, uh, Fear's the stranger here. So are you coming for dinner? Yeah. I'm uh, <laughs> here in about three hours. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Two hours? So good. Yeah. Early dinner. Really early. Yeah. We're going to yeah. stop together. Okay. We're going to spend the afternoon together and have a beautiful dinner together. Good. I'm looking but You're all to welcome to too, by the way. Yes. Beautiful you're family. All He'll be eating with us. Yeah. Thanks, family. Thanks for being here. We love you. We appreciate you. If you haven't signed up for the um, Thursday night text studies, I hope you'll consider it. Open your thought and ask for some guidance about it, but would love to have you join me. There's a link uh, below in the uh, resources page under show more or the description box, depending on what device you're using. Um, click on it and uh, register and come join. You have nothing to lose and everything to gain. And it's free. So please come. All right. Thank you. We'll see you next time. Yeah.